welcome back to The Lead Pile. On this video, I'm going to be making some scatter terrain for use in 15mm gaming. Um, specifically, in these videos, I'm going to be making some barbed wire fencing and some uh, ruins and rubbly areas, uh, just using bits from around the house. And that's going to be useful for World War II Flames of War style games. So the first thing we have is some leftover bits of um, scrap bases that I've used for other projects. Um, as you can see, they're just cardboard, leftover cardboard from the recycling. And I've PVA'd them and added sand and bits of like dirt. Um, that's it. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take um, a coil. Now this spring was just, I don't know, something broke uh, in the house <laughs> and it's left over. Um, and I've just fired it over there. Um, so yeah, it's still springy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of these bases um, and I'm going to pull it out. So, firstly, take out one of your cocktail sticks. Um, now, you can decide whether or not you want to chop the top bit off or leave it up. I'm going to chop the top bit off. Um, so it looks more like a steak uh, that's been um, stuck into the ground. And let's see then. Um, it's basically not going to be very high at all that you need. Um, maybe that high, something like that. Um, and I'm just going to keep hold of the other bits so it doesn't go flying and snip it off. So, you know, we're not dealing with very big chunks here at all. And I'm going to chip all of those off. It is a cheap budget build. I'm just going to glue these down first and then I'm going to place this over the top of them. Um, so that's the purpose of this video. So I'm going to glue these down now um, using, uh, this is the glue I quite like to use. Um, something like, I don't know, four pounds from the supermarket. And I found it works really well for um, 3D printed resin. Um, gluing together, where a lot of super glue doesn't seem to want to work for that. So uh, it's my go-to for that and I've got it lying around, so I'll try and use it for this. And having said all that, it's now not going to work. Um, so I'm just holding that down. I'll no doubt glue my finger, hopefully not. Um, not the most exciting part of the video, so I'm going to glue these down and then come back. Uh, yep, predictable, glued my finger. <laughs> Um, so actually when that happens, um, what you've got to do is you've got to take your uh, clippers and you just cut off your finger here. Um, no, you don't have to. Um, just peel that off there. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, it will happen. But yeah, that's glued really fast actually. So um, yeah, on with the rest. Okay guys, um, so whilst the um, cocktail sticks dry, um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do um, to the coil just to give it a little bit more character. So yes, this is supposed to be a quick build. Yes, you could just glue this down and it would be fine. But what I'm going to do, because I happen to have some lying around, is I've got, like I said earlier, some of this um, 26 gauge, 20mm um, yeah, cheap craft wire. And basically all I'm planning to do with this is to make little barbs on the wire. Um, now you don't have to do this, it's going to be potentially a bit tedious, um, but all I'm going to do is wrap, it's going to be hard to see, wrap the wire around like so. Okay, there we go, there's a, there's one wrap. And then 
I need to have got some of my um, pliers for this, you know. Get some pliers. If you have pliers, use pliers. Um, and then wrap it around that side. And... Do, 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 do. And there's a barb. Now, it's not very tight, it's a bit slack, so I'm actually going to wrap around again. Um, again, you don't need to do this. It's a bit, bit um, fiddly, like all things to do with terrain making. I'm going to have paint, patience of a saint, but there we go. Um, so, there we are, and all I'm going to do is, I really need to wipe the glue off of these pliers. Um, in fact, I can't. So this was hot glue, which um, there we go. Get that off. Um, yeah, like I said, now all I'm going to do is is snap these um, there, and I'm going to snap them there. Now I don't want to make them too long because it's not going to look right. But I also at this scale, um, if you make them too small, then well, I mean, it's not going to look right either. I mean, let's be honest, this wire is about the width of a guy's, of a rifle, um, in 10 or 15 mil, so it's not going to, it's not scaled proportionally, but it's just a visual representation. And there you go, there's a barb. Um, so that wasn't too hard. And you can do as many or as few of those as you want along here. I'm going to um, probably spend about, oh, hopefully, no more than five minutes putting some on here and uh, get back to you. Okay guys, um, there we go. I said I was gonna spend about five minutes on it and um, I actually spent just a, a, a little bit less than that. Um, but as you can see, there is still space. You could you, you could cover this whole thing in them if you wish to. Um, there might well be a quicker way of doing it as well, but you know, five minutes. And I think it adds a lot of uh, detail. But yeah, there we go, so that looks quite good. Um, and I'm just going to uh, glue it down now. Okay guys, um, there we go, finished. Um, well, finished uh, construction, anyway. Um, um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna apply a bit of wash onto those sticks. Uh, you could just leave them. Um, I'm gonna just put a dab of wash on them. Okay guys, so as you can see I've just added a dab of um, wash, uh, brown wash, um, onto those uh, sticks and onto the wire a little bit as well. Okay guys, so um, I'm just dry brushing this on now. Um, I've taken off most of the paint um, and just giving it a little dry brush just to add a little bit more of that brown into the mix. Um, you can see the difference already. It was very grey beforehand, it almost <laughs> matches the tabletop there. Um, so I'm just giving it a little bit more of a brown um, feel to it. Um, dry brushing is a, a very easy technique um, and a very effective technique at that. You're basically just using a rough brush um, and just gently, not applying much pressure at all, going up and down um, to just hit the top of your um, grit on the base there. Um, I'm being a bit, you know, I'm not taking this too seriously. Um, so I'm, I'm not being as gentle as I would if I was um, doing some more fine work. Um, yeah, we've still got the gray in there, but I don't mind, it gives a bit of contrast. I'm just gonna give a really light highlight now with the lighter color, uh, the Calax Stone, and then I'll show you what it's like afterwards. Okay guys, there we go. Um, I've just used, like I say, a little bit of this Carrack Stone there. Um, it's not drastically noticeable in this light, um, but there is a contrast, um, trust me, uh, there. You could take it up a notch, you could add a little bit of um, white uh, to your original colour, or you could use kind of like a buff colour, um, kind of like a sandy colour. Uh, it's up to you, depends how much of a contrast you want. Like anything, it's your hobby, do what you want. Okay guys, so here we are now. I've um, got a bit of cheap um, craft PVA glue, um, aged three up, so it's safe for me to use. 
and I have some of my homemade flock here. Uh, we're really about to do a video on how to make this, but um, essentially this starts off life as a cat litter. Well, technically it starts off life as a tree, um, but it is wood cat litter. The kind of wood pellets you get, I got a whole bag, a massive bag. Um, God knows how much pee a cat must do, but um, it was a huge bag for like a few pounds. Um, and basically all I've done is I have uh, soaked it um, and then I've dried it and then I've added colour and blended it up and uh, you've got, I mean I've got boxes and boxes of this stuff now, all different colours. Um, this is just a basic green one. Um, again, you could use all different sorts of highlights with you. You could put down a dark green, then a light green, a little bit of white, but anyway. Um, so I've got my brush and I have my PVA glue and I'm just going to slop it on uh, where I want. Uh, now, I don't want to cover up all of my nice texture uh, from my base, but um, I do want to get a bit of green on there. Um, obviously, it depends on, on what sort of theatre you're playing in. If you're uh, gaming in uh, World War One, for instance, and you obviously you're probably not going to do this, but you could use different colours and stuff um, to suit. So I'm just now gently breaking it up between my fingers and sprinkling it on. Um, there we go. Now I'm not using any static grass applicator or anything like that. Um, it is going to be lying flat, but. I don't mind, you know, this is it's homemade gaming with homemade terrain. That's what wargaming is for me. Um, there we are. Look at that. Um, I should add, I've done all of this in one sitting. So that just shows how well that super glue has worked there. Um, the amount of times I've bought super glue and it just doesn't seem to do anything. Um, in fact, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put another patch down. Uh, uh, bit more PVA. Too much PVA. And let's go in this corner as well. Why not? This is my favourite part of the builds. Um, tying it all together. I'm gonna go over there. Join up with that little bit there. Uh huh. And just sprinkle it down a bit more PPA on there. And sprinkling the flock. Now even in this flock mixture you can see there's a few different shades there. I added, um, basically I mixed two together. So this has got light green paint through it. But I then also put in a little bit of um, like an a yellowy, just uh, to give it some natural variation. So we've got like the, the yellowy lighter bits there as well. Now, you know, for gaming terrain that you've made in about, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes, that's not bad, is it? Now, what we can also do is use some, um, what I really like, are some of these um, tufts. Now, again, you can go crazy with this sort of stuff. You can add all different lengths of tufts, you can add different colours of tufts, you can, you can spend a fortune just on the bloody tufts before you even got your models. Um, these um, I bought uh, a while ago. Oh, there's three. Okay, I'm using three. But you could spend as much or as little on tufts. At the end of the day, they are just tufts. Um, and these ones are being used on terrain, so I don't spend a lot of money on them. I think um, these, the company that did these are finished now, but I've got some like war paint ones as well. Again, just Google them and um, spend as much or as little as you want. It is your hobby. So all I'm doing is I'm applying a little bit of, gosh, see they, they are sticky, you can see them, oh, yep, okay. 
uh, they are sticky. Oh no, where did I glue it? There we go again. But it's not enough. You do need to put a bit of super glue or PVA glue down as well. Um, tweezers. Tweezers are what you want to be using for this. Um, you can tell I'm a professional. Now, where else, where else would suit a bit of grass? Uh, let's chop one over here. I have made the mistake before of adding loads of rocks and tufts and falling down twigs and logs and everything, and then I couldn't get my models to sit flat on the base. So, you know, it is a gaming piece at the end of the day. If you're using it purely for a diorama or for gaming, then you want it to be practical as well. So, yeah, you can... You can add a load of tufts, but at the same time, um, and rocks and everything, do make sure that it is still a practical source. Um, you know, I don't actually think it needs another one, but there's a little pale patch there, so I'm covering it up. Great way to cover up your mistakes. Um, da -da 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 -da. Come on. Okay, that one's not the best but get a picture um, so there we go you know that has not taken very long at all to make um, and that's going to really add a little bit more um, character to a game it's actually gonna work well as well for a game because I'm just gonna use it as a impassable terrain for infantry um, and the world really is your oyster when it comes to terrain that was a spring that was sitting around the house. I was going to throw it in the bin. I've got a couple of cocktail sticks and a bit of cardboard at the end of the day. Um, the rest of it is just entirely decorative and up to personal choice. You don't need the flock. You don't need the the, the tuft. You could just paint it green, you know, or you could just leave it brown. Um, what you could also do is you could stick these down in a straight line on a lollipop stick as well. But yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching guys, and we will see you on the next one.